What's going on, everybody? David Barnett of the Tour Junkies. I got Pat Perry here with me. He's the old guy with the swoop haircut and the year he was born on his t-shirt. We are here to talk about the WGC HSBC. Another 78-man no-cut event, uh, but we're, we're going to talk... We're going to talk DFS for that, but we're also going to talk about the alternate field event that is going on in Bermuda, a brand new event that's basically a birdie fest. So we're going to talk about that from a sportsbook perspective on DraftKings. But before we do all that and we get into the picks and we get into a few disagreements that we had on the Tour Junkies podcast we just recorded, Pat, how you doing, buddy? And uh, tell us a little bit about the old Shishan golf course. Yeah, I'm doing well, and Shishan is a great, fantastic course uh, this week. It is one of the mo- more exclusive courses, uh, by the way, in China. You love that. So, you love uh, that fact. I love it. I love it. Yeah, this is a great course. They're they're going to have a good time here. Look, it's in fantastic conditions always. Par 72 playing 7,264 yards. As you mentioned, 78 players, no cut. You got bent grass greens. They're going to be perfect greens this week. I think they're going to be just, they're going to be rolling quick though. I mean, literally 11 to 12 on the stump meter. A lot of undulation on these greens. Uh, But this is a course that these guys should score well on. You look at the par fives here, all of them except for one are, are, uh, are definitely scorable. I mean, they're playing at 550 yards, 563, and 538 for the 18th hole. So literally these guys should score, uh, you know, just in bunches on these par fives here. And so I'll definitely be looking at par five scoring. You also got a drivable par four this week, another one at uh, the par four 16th hole playing about 290 yards. This is a bomber's course. Make no mistake about it. You look at the historical stats here. Bombers certainly are going to felt fare well. Past champs, Xander Shoffley in 2018, Justin Rose 2017, Hideki in 16, Russell Knox in 2015, Bubba Watson, obviously another bomber in 2014, and then DJ in 2013. Look, weather's going to be perfect this week. No, no rain. No wind, nothing. These guys will absolutely—they'll just be bombing it away, scoring whatever else this week. So that's what I'm going to be looking at, and uh, definitely, you know, guys that are putting well on bent grass greens and in good form. So there you go. We got some history for for once, and uh, you know, we haven't had that, haven't had that for the last few weeks with some new events. Um, but there you go. What do you got? You got anything on this course, DB? No, man. I like it. I like the bombers, like you said. I like uh, you got wider fairways here, so you can you can bomb and gouge this place. Uh, I do think you're going to see a winning score in that 19 to 22 under, 19 to 21 under kind of range. You got to take advantage of those par fives and that short par four you mentioned. Um, it, this just completely sets up to be a, a a bomber kind of greens and regulation kind of kind of place where you know it's going to reward a guy in form like you mentioned who can be aggressive and put well on these bent grass surfaces so uh, but in terms of DFS I think what's more important than all of that if you're playing in tournaments and GPPs over on DraftKings uh, you're looking at uh, ownership that's that's what you're looking at ownership Mm -hmm. leverage in tournaments that is what you need ownership leverage this is a stronger field you know there there are a few of the uh, the big names missing here, obviously Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, those guys, but Justin Thomas. Um, but it's still a decent field, and and you're you know you're gonna eliminate the bottom ten to twelve guys that are getting exemptions for whatever reason. So, you know when you cut the field down and you think about no cut, you, you've got to have some ownership leverage and have those guys pop. Tiger was owned at around eleven percent last week. That's important. You got to have some guys like that. So I think that's important. Um, a guy that that you know let, let's get into some picks here Pat cuz we just had a podcast and and there's a little bit of disagreements. You know, we had a lot of agreement last week on the show. This week we've got more disagreements. Um I have to say I am not a I'm not an enormous fan of your Henrik Stenson call. Now, in the 9k and above range on DraftKings, I definitely think that it's tough to fade. You know, you can make a reason to play any of these guys. Like I'll just I, I mean, for real. So I'm. This isn't a. 
this isn't a like, oh my God, I hate Henrik Stenson play. Because obviously the guy has played very, very well here. His history here is outstanding. Uh, we last saw him play the Houston Open, where he did miss the cut at the Houston Open. He also cracked his beloved three wood that we've all known that he's he's had an affection for for quite some time. Um, you know, but but I just I'm looking at I'm looking at at the at the stats too. And you know, if you look over his last three golf tournaments, he's not really doing very well in checking the box and strokesing it off the tee. Uh, he's not doing well in 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 greens and regulation. Which is a little weird for him. I get it. It's an anomaly. But when you look over the last hundred rounds, you look at long-term putting on bent grass greens. He's also like a little bit below middle of the pack. He's forty-fourth in this field in strokes gained putting on bent grass. You know, Hendrick doesn't like the bent grass, and so uh, in that in that range of nine k and above on DK, he is the one I feel like is is you can make a case for fading. And you said you like him in tournaments. Well, I mean, I think you look. I mean, I love this over nine k range. There's a lot of guys. It's hard to fade anybody here. Um, I, I think the biggest reason that I'll fade him is ownership reasons. Coming off of that miscut at, at Houston, um, I just I feel like he's going to have. A, there's going to be a little bit of a downgrade on him as far as it's concerned for ownership. Um, he obviously does have a great history here. He's gained over almost 41 strokes on the field in his last five times or four times playing here with two straight second place finishes in 2018 and 2017. Um, look at his stats. I don't know. I mean, you, you mentioned greens and regulation. I mean, I show him 12th in the field in greens and regulation. So, I mean, not, not all that bad well, when you consider. I'm, I'm looking, looking over the last 24 events. You're probably looking at, Maybe twelve. I'm looking at last maybe. twelve, and and he does have you know yeah exactly. So that's that's and, and he's that's typically him. good in that in that department. He's also fifth in the field in strokes gained scoring on par fives, um, which I mentioned uh, when we started the, the the show here is I think you got to score on these par fives. You got to take advantage because they are def- definitely get getable here. So I do like that. Um, always a great ball striker. I mean, look. He's not your longest guy off the tee, but I just think Stinson, if I'm going to get him a little bit lower owned, a guy that's shown some course history here, I like that. So we'll see. And and look, ownership is so. What do you tough th- What to, do you think he's going to be? Where, where do you think he's going to be? Like I I I I think I think you are because you have so many good players here in the nine k. I could see nine k and above. I could see some diluted kind of you know spread out ownership between like a. Byung Hun An, a Sung J M, Tony Finau, Stenson, all, people always love F- Fleetwood, and then your 10K guys are all studs. So I could see a little diluted ownership, but I do think Hendrick Stenson, having gained 40 strokes at this event in just four attempts over the last five years, that course history is going to garner a little bit of ownership. What what do you? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. What I mean, what, what did was... you? What do you see as not being ownership leverage? What's the number? If you look at and he's and he's X percent owned. I think on... if he's over fifteen percent, he you're not getting leverage. Okay. I mean, like he was seventeen percent owned at the Houston Open. Missed the cut. Uh, yeah. And missed the cut. So obviously, but he was getting, he was one was of the eight, higher price he, guys. He was like one of the, the top. Last in the last WGC event he played in, he was eight percent owned, which was the WGC the Saint Jude Classic. Saint Jude. So okay, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you typically, I feel, I feel like you're gonna, I think you're gonna get them ten percent, maybe, and I'll okay. take that. So we'll see. Um, I gotta admit, I didn't have a whole lot of guys that I was like really, you know, uh, like anti you on. Um, huh. I mean, you. you it's you hard have, to do. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, but most of the guys we we tended to agree on. I do think Paul Casey is is one that you were you were on that I think is just I'm just I don't know I don't want to play him in tournaments I don't want to play him in cash I just feel like everybody's going I mean I, he I, he could probably be in one cash? of the higher end players this week uh, yeah yeah I would totally play him in cash I mean I, I I like him no matter what I mean I. I'll eat the chalk on him. I don't think he's gonna be. I don't think he's gonna be as high as we're typically used to seeing of Paul Casey. He's never gonna be like a sub ten percent guy, um, just because he's, he's so not, consistent. But don't you think in a WGC event where a Paul Casey, a guy that just fits every box, good history, form, whatever else, 
it just makes sense almost a hundred percent of the time to fade him. I feel no, like. I don't. I don't think that at, at all. Actually, I, I think you're going to have a lot of players who are going to want to play Xander Schauffele after last week. They're going to want to play Hideki, especially after last week. They're going to want to play Rory after his recent form, and that is not going to leave a whole lot of room for Paul Casey uh, because they're going to want to pair those guys with a Byung Hun An, a, a, a Sung J M, a Tony Finau. I, I could see Casey getting a little bit less ownership. I, again, I, Paul Casey is rarely owned under ten percent. That's that's not going to happen. But if, if I that's can get not happening. if I can get a Paul Casey at fifteen percent. If I can get a Paul Casey at 15%, I will go double e- easily. I'll be overweight on that ownership in terms of tournament play, and I will definitely play him in cash no matter what. I, you mentioned it. The form checks the boxes. Great record here at Shishan. Um, big fan of the Paul Casey play. I, I let, me, let me tell you a play, though, that you know outside of Paul Casey that I do like. You know, we, we try to do have a lot of, you know, disagreement on the DK show here after dark uh, because that usually gives the best content and we argue and whatever else. But you mentioned Justin Rose on the podcast, and I think that's a good play. I mean, we haven't seen him play all that much lately, and I definitely do think he's going to get lower ownership. He's obviously shown he can play well here. He's won here uh, back in 2017. Last year, he was third. Um, so I think he's kind of the sneaky play at 10-5 where you're getting a really good price and you're getting a guy that I think a lot of people are not are just not thinking about right now. They're kind of sleeping on a little bit. And I like that play with Justin Rose. So I, I, I you can probably expound upon that a little bit with, with what you talked about on the podcast. But I'm a fan there of uh, of that Rose pick. Thank you. Uh, the Rose Justin had a horrible FedEx playoff run, where between the BMW and the Tour Championship, he lost more than ten strokes putting, um, which you know is as highly variable. Number one, uh, but then he followed that up with an eighth place finish at the BMW Wentworth on the European Tour, which is a tough golf course. That's a big boy golf tournament. Uh, again, with a thirty fourth at the Alfred Dunhill. Um, and then the a 15th place finish in uh, here in October at the Italian Open. So he's back and he's and he's probably playing a little bit better, putting a little bit better. Um, and the history here, I mean, a third place last year and a win the year before that. We know Justin Rose is a world class player, and I think you're right. I think out of that top five, he will probably be the lowest own. I think Rose and, and Casey will be your two lowest own plays in that top five tier in terms of tournaments on DraftKings. So, thank you. Um, I, I do have to say, you got to defend your Phil Mickelson play because you said you wanted to play Phil at 7,400. F- poor Phil. I mean, Phil, 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 Phil. He just He's just sucking hind teat. His best finish, uh, his best finish has been the Masters, where he finished 18th. That's the last time Phil Mickelson top 20 That's the last time Phil Mickelson top 20 Pat. Say that out loud. That's the last time he top 20 And now you're putting him in a Look, W. Like he didn't, he, did, he didn't top, he didn't top 20 at the Shriners, the Safeway, uh, the, the Travelers, um, like all these horrid events with way worse fields. Oh man, I, I, I just there's I don't know really how you there's really field. only a couple reasons that I'm even playing him. And here here's the thing: look, he's not playing that great, and whatever else you want to say, we're definitely going to get low ownership. I mean, he was six point yeah, well, one yeah. at the CJ Cup, he was two point eight at the Shriners, whatever else. But look, he puts extremely well on bent grass greens that are quick, undulating greens. We've seen it at the Masters. And I, I like that about him. I think this is a this is a course that actually sets up well for his game. He's not he's erratic off the tee where you don't have to and, and here's the thing, it doesn't matter because you don't have to be very accurate off the tee here. He's certainly got enough length to play this course well. He's aggressive as hell. And we talked about that on the podcast is yeah. we want aggressive type players who try to score and do whatever else. And so I'm willing to give it a shot for him. And, you know, a short field event where we've got no cut, I'm okay with that because I, you know, these are the weeks that I just, I just want to, you're gambling. I mean, 
you're literally gambling your dollars this week because there's there's the little room for error. There's a lot of things that can happen. You just never know what's gonna you know what what can happen in these in your lineups. And it's it's totally different in the full field events where you have a cut and all that kind of stuff. But we don't have this week that this week for for Phil. So try him out, see what happens. And I don't know, he could win you the the big money. And so that's what I think. That's why I'm playing Phil. I think like if I'm gonna win like a huge GPP tournament lineup, you know, and I'm just gonna win all the money, Phil might be in there for some reason. I have no idea. It could happen. Bull move, Con. It's not like he's been. It's not like he's been terrible lately. He's not yeah. like turned into David Duvall or anything. I mean, like let, let, let's not forget that the guy is still <laughs> super talented. I mean, we're not like, like I feel like this is like like Mickelson is being written off as some player who's a has been, and this this is just not the case. So I, I like playing him in, in in fields like this. So there you go. I mean, his best finish since April was an eighteenth. Let's get into some DraftKings sportsbook plays. Uh, currently, all that's on offer as the time of this recording, TJ After Dark, is the Bermuda, which uh, is a brand new event. It's an alternate field event uh, being held in guess what? Uh, guess what? Bermuda, and it's obviously a coastal track, very resort style. Par seventy one, a measly six thousand eight hundred and twenty eight yards. It is basically a corn ferry event. Uh, it is going to be an absolute birdie fest, eagle fest, scoring fest. A lot of the par fours under 400 yards here. This is a wedge, a wedge dart throwing competition. Um, this is a a a 100% scoring fest here. Um, it's it's being held at Port Royal Golf Club uh, in Bermuda. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking over here on DraftKings Sportsbook. Couple of plays, couple of plays that I like. I'll start with. Uh, here's the thing: you got a tournament like this. Yeah, you can bet on Scotty Scheffler, right? But in a scoring fest like this, a corn fairy event like this, literally any of these guys could pop up and get hot, get hot with the putter and win. It's not worth betting the the lower odds players. Just not. So I'm going to start with Robbie Shelton and Sepp Straka at 45 to one each. Um, both very, very talented young players hit it a long way, know how to strike their balls in possibly windy coastal conditions. And, uh, yeah, PJ tour, high caliber experience, uh, right on their heels. Another very talented corn fairy, uh, rookie here on the PJ tour, Harry Higgs at 55 to one. I'm going to go with a doppelganger of yourself, Pat at Hank Leviota at 90 to one. And then I'm going to hit uh, Seamus Power at 100 to one, just because Seamus, he's you know he pl- he's, he's played on the PGA Tour a couple years, scores very well on par fives, hits it a long way, aggressive guy. Um, it just feels weird not to bet him in this event. And then finally, a guy who we interviewed on the podcast and released this week, very talented young player off the Corn Ferry Tour, Sebastian Kaplan at 175 to one. He told me on the podcast this week. I'm a bomber, and I'm an, a calculated, aggressive player. I like playing aggressively. He likes making birdies and eagles. That's what's going to take here. 175 to 1, you might as well throw a little quarter unit on a little Sebastian Kaplan. So there's my picks on DK Sportsbook. Okay, I like it. I'll give you several here. Um, I like Patrick Rogers at 60 to 1. He's a, the shortest odds guy that I think I would play. Obviously, he's played... A ton of tour events and as one of the more experienced guys in this field. So I like Rogers at 60 to 1. I like Tyler McCumber at 100 to 1, a guy that's been a scorer. Uh, we saw him last year on the Corn Ferry Tour. Definitely, come, I, I can't even believe he didn't get a win, but the guy just every week was up there in the top 10, top 15. Playing so well like so him. far early in the in the tour season, too. Yeah, and Roberto Castro at seventy to one, I think, is another good, just solid sort of experienced tour player. I like him at seventy to one, and then another guy, long shot, Boo Weekly, one hundred seventy five to one. You know, a short course. He's a wedge player. And yeah. Wedge player, everything else. I like some Boo Weekly at one hundred seventy five to one. So there you go. Those are my picks for the Bermuda something classic. I don't think so. Probably just like championship. I'm guessing. Let's see. 
What the hell is it? Bermuda. Oh, yeah, Bermuda Championship. Yeah, there we go. Southampton, Bermuda. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Thanks for watching TJ After Dark. If you've not already, go check out the Tour Junkies podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And thanks for watching. Listen, we know it's NFL season, and we know nobody gives two nickels about what we're doing, and uh, we appreciate it. So, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Even though you don't give a crap, we appreciate it. Well, the watch. Give it a thumbs up. Hey, give it a thumbs up. Give it a subscribe. Let DraftKings know you appreciated the content that the Tour Junkies brought here at TJ After Dark. That would help us out. That would make us look like people care. Right, Pat? That, yes, indeed. Okay. All right, Mayor Screens, be green. See ya!